السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We thank him for everything that he has blessed us with We ask him to bless us during this beautiful month of Ramadan. We ask him to send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and to bless every single one of us. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. He knows everything we go through and he knows what we need. And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has said in the Qur'an or made mention of the purpose that He has created us. He says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind nor jinn kind except for them to worship me. If we take a careful look at this verse, it seems like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to keep us in constant acts of worship up to the point of death. The reality is that is true. But what is meant by act of worship is understood differently by those who have knowledge as compared to those who do not have knowledge. So those who do not have knowledge would probably think that this means you need to remain in salah throughout the day, perhaps fast every single day, perhaps be engaged in some form of recitation of the Quran or the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those who have knowledge are quite aware of the fact that everything you and I need in this world, we can convert it into an act of worship if the intention is right and if we are doing it with the correct purpose. Obviously, going back to the intention. If you have Iman, you believe in Allah, you follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and your intention is correct. No matter what you do in terms of goodness, you will always achieve a reward for it. In fact, even to abstain from prohibition is an act of worship. When a sin is very easily available or is facilitated for us, and then we find ourselves abstaining from that sin, it becomes an act of worship. Abstention from prohibition is an act of worship. It pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I were to stay away from adultery, from gambling, from smoking, from drugs, from various other sins, it would automatically be an act of worship and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the further I engage in these items, the more distant I become from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah made us and Allah knows that we will be living in environments that may not be Islamic. We will be living in an environment perhaps where sin will be so easy to commit. We will be living in an environment where perhaps it will not be so simple to come to the masjid unless you have a lot of willpower and a lot of iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that to abstain from haram will be a challenge. Allah knows that we will be living across the entire globe, Muslim lands, non-Muslim lands, and so on. He knows that you and I will exist and are existing. And He knows who is to come after us. So He has set a plan. And that plan is in order to help us pull through in a way that we earn Jannah. May Allah grant us Jannah. Amen. What is this beautiful plan? Part of it is to give us a gift known as Ramadan. Amazing. And this Ramadan is such that Wallahi, the timing of it is absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. Imagine if throughout the globe, everyone had to have Ramadan at exactly the same time in the Gregorian year, which means, say for example, now we have June and July. Throughout the life of an individual where you are living, it's always in June and July. It won't be fair because sometimes you will have a cold fast, sometimes a fast in the heat, sometimes a long one, sometimes a short one. The people in the UK are literally struggling at the moment, achieving a greater reward for their dedication for fasting 18 to 20 hours right now. But they will be smiling all the way when their fast is only about 6 to 8 hours.
sometime 30 years down the line perhaps. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Look at how fair Allah is. Look at how balanced He is. So you will taste a long fast, a short fast, one in summer, one in winter, and it keeps on moving 10 days up every single year. That is the disparity between the lunar and the solar calendars. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand His justice. Similarly, can you imagine a Ramadan that happened to have been less than 30 days, 29 days? Less. Say Ramadan was one week. Just as we are rolling in and warming up, it's over. We would not achieve the proper spirituality. Allah knows that you need one whole month out of the 12 months. You need the entire month. Imagine if Ramadan was longer than a month, perhaps we would lose focus. Because you know, it climaxes around the end. Amazingly, 21, 23, 25, 27, and we are climaxing climax right at the top it's at the end the masajid get even more packed do you agree subhanallah that's the power of allah but if we had two months one wonders perhaps a month later people would start losing focus and one wonders whether that dedication to the quran would actually be there amazing you have 30 jews of the quran and you have 29 to 30 days of ramadan amazing how allah has married all this matched it in such a beautiful way for us who are his worshippers and his creatures he knows that through the year you might be engaged in sin you might be swearing backbiting although you know that that is wrong you might have uh, a little bit of hatred and jealousy in your heart that begins to develop and the rust begins to develop in your heart. Allah says, we give you a month of softness. The first thing that happens as the month is declared, immediately you feel the spirituality of Ramadan. Wallahi, it is something every believer knows. You have to be, be, be a believer. In fact, some of the disbelievers who might be living in the midst of the Muslimin would also be able to feel that something has changed. Subhanallah. With us, no matter what, the moment Ramadan starts, there is a difference in the light that is around us. There is a difference in the faces. Immediately the heart supposed to soften. Even the hardest hearts are softened in the month of Ramadan. You need to know this. People who are stingy, niggardly, miserly, they become charitable. In the month of Ramadan, you would be shocked to see them giving handsome amounts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us give. May He help us become compassionate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soften our hearts. This is why the one who does not seize the opportunity of Ramadan is such a big loser that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa climbing the minbar, you, you and I, may, you may know that he said Ameen thrice. And one of the duas that he was saying Ameen to, as he explained later on, وَيْلٌ لِمَنْ أَدْرَكَ رَمَضَانَ فَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ له. Woe be or destruction be upon the one who has witnessed Ramadan and still has not achieved forgiveness. The course of their life has not changed in a positive manner. You have Ramadan. It's a powerful gift. It's not going to last so long. And guess what? Ramadan is an auspicious month. Friday is an auspicious day. The moment that we are speaking right now is the auspicious moment within the Friday. And the place we are in is the house of your own maker. Subhanallah, auspiciousness upon auspiciousness upon auspiciousness. If you are still not feeling softened and you are still not feeling that I need to quit my bad ways and habits, then you are the only one to lose. May Allah not do that to us. My brothers and sisters, take a look at the beauty of this month. We look at one another with a lot of love. We try to resolve matters because we are taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that in this beautiful month, an act of worship is multiplied literally on sale. These are the acts of worship on sale. Imagine if you were planning a holiday and suddenly the airline that you'd like to fly with, they announce a huge holiday. You will have to plan it now and make sure you buy your tickets because you know that I'm going to get it at one tenth of the price and I'm going to fly in comfort subhanallah well we have a sale right now what is on sale good deeds are on sale abstention from prohibition is on sale go and resolve your dispute with your brothers your sisters your family members go and say I'm sorry go and solve it and you find the mercy of Allah rushing in your direction Man atani yamshi atayituhu harwala. Allah says, whoever comes to me walking, I will rush to him, subhanallah. You want Allah to rush to you? You need to make an effort. It's not easy to walk towards Allah. So this is the month of softening the hearts. We find it difficult to read salah through the year. It's true. 
Because the environment we live in, there might not be a masjid near our area. We are not living in a Muslim land. And at the same time, it might be quite difficult because of the weather and the timings, depending on where you're living, because of the, the people who live around you who may not be showing such a great interest. May Allah grant us good company and companionship that can actually bring us to the masjid. But Allah knows that we find it difficult through the year. So what He does, He adds for us an extra voluntary prayer in the evening that is such that combined it is more than the entire prayer of the whole day which is compulsory put together subhanallah if you are ready to fulfill taraweeh in the proper sense you will achieve so much of raha raha meaning the peace and the comfort that you are meant to be achieving through this beautiful month that you will find it so easy to fulfill your farad salah throughout the rest of the year imagine the dose this is why you and i know when you go to a doctor what does he write for you if you are unwell? Something known as a prescription. Why do they call it a prescription? You cannot change it. You cannot alter it. It starts at this time. It ends at that time. And the doctor will tell you, you better make sure you finish the course. The same words are used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to fasting in Ramadan. Ya amanu. O you who believe. Do you consider yourself a believer? If the answer is yes, listen carefully. The one who made you is talking to you. He is addressing you. Yes, you. He is saying, Oh, you who believe. Fasting has been written, prescribed. Notice the wording, kutiba. Fasting has been prescribed upon you just like it was prescribed upon those before you. They had different prescriptions. Their antibiotic was slightly different. Yours is slightly different, but it is also fasting. Fasting meaning to abstain from certain things that you like a lot. What do you love? You love your food. Wow, mashallah. Allah says, stay away from it for a while. We'll help you. We'll help you dedicate. You, what else do you love? Your spouse. Allah says, stay away from her or for, from him for a little while. We'll give you something you love. Subhanallah. You'll appreciate what you have. Amazing. Look at the prescription. When the doctor tells you stay away from that which is high in cholesterol, we make sure like gospel we follow it. Because we don't want to have a blood test showing us that the cholesterol is a little bit high. Similarly, you have spiritual cholesterol that affects you. And Allah has given us spiritual remedy for that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. It is a prescription, prescribed. And guess what he says about the course? He says, make sure you finish the course. Do you want to hear the verse? وَلِتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةِ Allahu Akbar. Allah says, make sure you finish in order that you may finish the idda. What is an idda? It is a prescribed time, the course. If you have less, you may not achieve. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and may He grant us goodness. But even outside the month of Ramadan, there is the beauty. Do you know what that beauty is? A lot of us tend to forget it. But I call on you to adopt it after Ramadan. You could fast for one whole month for the sake of Allah, compulsory fast. What about voluntary? Let's try it out as well. Subhanallah. In every act of worship, we have compulsory and voluntary. Take a look at Hajj. You have the pilgrimage that is the major one known as Hajj. And then you have the voluntary which is known as Umrah, which is the minor pilgrimage. Many of us are so keen on going for Umrah that SubhanAllah, if we were able to go at any given time, especially now in the beautiful month of Ramadan, we would. Then you have salah, you have the farad of your prayer, and you have the voluntary. Many of us fulfill voluntary. We are actually required to do that in the sense that it would be something meritorious, something really good for you. This is amazing. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gift for you. How many of us are ready to increase our voluntary prayer? In the month of Ramadan, the reward is multiplied. Allah says we are multiplying it so that you get used to it. So that after Ramadan, you don't just say, okay, farad alone. Add a little bit of voluntary prayer even after Ramadan. Come on, Allahu Akbar. May Allah make it easy for us. Then you have, for example, zakah. When it comes to zakah and charity, what do you have? You have that which is compulsory and then you have voluntary sadaqat. That which is in some places of the world termed lillah. Which means for the sake of Allah, I'm just giving. It's over and above my charity. Two and a half percent I worked out. But I'm embarrassed because the Christians are giving 10% of their salary. I'm only giving two and a half percent of my annual saving. I'd rather give a little bit more for the sake of Allah. To please Allah, I'm going to give another 10%. Ready to do that? While the Christians are doing it, 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us become givers. Those who can give and those who can do it in a beautiful way for the sake of Allah. Not because others are doing it or not. That is besides the point. It's only an example we draw. But we have a greater encouragement straight from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about fasting? Why do we falter there? Let's be honest. The bulk of us, myself included, we are guilty of making sure Ramadan we fast. But after Ramadan, how often do we fast? How much of the voluntary fasting comes into effect? When, when a research on BBC tells you that it's healthy to fast twice a week, we start thinking about it. But when Muhammad said it 1436 years back, we haven't yet given it a second thought. Monday and Thursday, I encourage you to fast. Wallahi, it will improve your health and it will increase your concentration. It will do a lot for the toxins and the removal of them from your system. And by the will of Allah, it will act as a beautiful antioxidant. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us achieve good health. Amazing. Look at this. So Allah is telling us, you know what? We will give you a multiplied reward. What a beautiful multiplied reward. Let's take a look at it. The hadith says, Man saama Ramadan, thumma atba'ahu sitta min shawwal, kana ka siyam al-dahr. Wa thalika li anna al-hasanata bi'ashri amthaliha. Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, and then adds another six days of shawwal, voluntary, they will have the reward of having fasted the entire year. Wow. Imagine you work for one month, and then they tell you, just add another six days, and we give you a salary for the whole year. Look at the smiles, mashallah. Salary for the whole year. When it comes to the rand and the dollar, we are fast, we are quick. When it comes to the currency of the akhirah, shaitan makes us lag behind. Don't let that happen. Let's make an intention now. This year, I'm going to fast the six fasts of Shawwal, inshallah. I make that intention and I hope you join me in it as well. May Allah make it easy for us to fulfill it. I mean, we say it every year. Do we do it? We watch others doing it. Do we do it? Let's be honest. Subhanallah. So by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have the month of Ramadan. Allah multiplies it by 10. It becomes worth 10 months. There is a shortfall of two months because the year has 12 months. How do we get that? Well, three days would multiply by 10, giving you 30 days, which means a month approximately. And another 30 days, which is another month. So that would be six days. So six days of Shawwal multiplied by 10. You have your two months. Amazing. Look at the calculation. Look at the mercy of Allah. And guess what? Every month Allah says, you fast three days, the 13th, 14th, and 15th of the lunar calendar. And guess what? We will multiply it for you by 10. You get the reward of the whole month once again. Subhanallah. Ready to do it? Think about it. Write it down as your resolutions. I tell you why I say write it down. My brothers and sisters, I am a human being just like you. We plan things when we are in a soft spiritual moment. And then when we become hardened because of what we see outside, we tend to lose focus and we forget what we promised Allah. We say, inshallah, I'll fast the six fast. Then suddenly you see the pizzas and the chicken and everything else and the roast and alhamdulillah. And you watch all the beautiful salads and everything and the aroma of the beautiful bread that is being baked. And you say, no, 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 inshallah, next year I will do it. And that next year keeps on coming and coming until subhanallah, we, we lose our lives. Come on, make a plan. Tell your spouse, tell your family members, listen, this year we're going to have the day of Eid. And after that, inshallah, we'll all collectively try and do this for the sake of Allah. It does not have to be all together. It can be staggered, but it has to be in the month of Shawwal. I think we can do this. So my brothers and sisters, let's go back and take a look at the prescription of Allah. Don't you agree with me? It is the month of mercy. It is the month of forgiveness. It is the month of solving your disputes. Sadly, shaitan, as much as he is tied in this month, he made his plan before Ramadan, just like our sisters and our women. What do they do for the month of Ramadan? They happen to plan for it in advance, so they don't have to make all the savories. Just before the month of Ramadan, the freezers are full, completely packed, so that all all those savories can last. They've actually labeled them day one, day two, day three, day four, up to day 30 in case we don't see the moon. Shaitan has a similar plan, but of a different nature. Different nature meaning he knows I'm going to be locked up for 30 days. Let me plan how I want this guy to be 30 days. Day one, day two, day three, he's going to fight about the fan in the masjid. Day four, he's going to fight about the sound. Day, day six, he's going to fight about the window. Day seven, he's going to really swear someone in the afternoon when he's hungry and angry. And wallahi, that's what happens. People ask, well, if shaitan is tied, 
How then do we get so angry in the month of Ramadan? I tell you, we become little shayateen ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Really. It's a month of softening. Allah says, yes, you will be hungry. Yes, anger might try to overtake you. But you know you have a greater reward to abstain from anger. That is why it comes towards you in a greater force. Why does anger come to us? And wallahi, it happens to a lot of us. Why do we get so upset? Short wire, as they call it, short fuse. Why? In the month of Ramadan, it's worse. The reason is, or one of the reasons, because to abstain from prohibition is a great act of worship. In the month of Ramadan, it's multiplied. The greater the force, the greater the reward. Imagine if I was really going to get so angry and I calmed down. Imagine the reward. Whereas if it was something minor and I was just, by the way, minor issue, the reward would be smaller. Subhanallah, that's the will of Allah. And this is why you tend to fast outside Ramadan. Sometimes you feel hungry. When it comes to in the month of Ramadan, sometimes your belly starts rumbling. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us through these fasts. Wallahi, what keeps me going is the thought of what the people in Europe are going through right now. Subhanallah. They have two or three hours to pack in their Maghrib, their Isha, their, uh, should I say, Iftar, then the Taraweeh, then the Suhoor, and they're back. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them. This having been said, my brothers and sisters, it's important for us to pray for the Ummah. It's not just about yourself. There are people who cannot afford food and drink. There are people across the world who are Muslimin, who've been driven out of their homes solely because they utter the Shahada. There are people who are struggling, homeless. They were wealthier than you and I. It took five minutes for all that to go away. It can happen to me. May Allah not do it to any of us. Think about them. Reach out to them. Reach deep, not only into your pockets, but even in your prayers. The Muslims of Burma, the Muslims of Nepal, the Muslims of Pakistan, the Muslims of India, the Muslims of Bangladesh, the Muslims of Syria, the Muslims of Palestine, the Muslims of Afghanistan, the Muslims of Somalia, the Muslims of Sudan, and the list goes on endless, completely endless. We're adding more and more names as the days pass. We ask Allah to bless them, to have mercy on them. On this particular Friday, in this beautiful month of Jumu'ah, from this pulpit in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at this moment, we say, Ya Allah, help them in every single way of the term help. Ameen. Reach out to them. Brothers and sisters, we are not true believers. Until we feel what they are feeling and try to reach out to them in whatever way possible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be compassionate in this beautiful month of compassion. Allah will have mercy on you for as long as you continue to have mercy on others. كان الله في عون العبد ما كان العبد في عون أخيه. Allah continues to be in the assistance of His worshipper for as long as that worshipper continues to be in the assistance of others. May Allah subhanahu wa taala help us by the will of Allah. I hope to be in this beautiful masjid for the next four Jumuahs or at least three, depending on how many we will be having. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to make it easy for us. By the end of this prescribed time, we are transformed human beings. Cut out the swear words, cut out the vulgar, cut out the lies, cut out the deception, cut out the adultery, cut out the gambling, cut out the drugs, cut out the drinking, cut out all the bad habits, the, the pornography, whatever else it may be, the haram relations that you have, cut them out completely. This is what the fasting is all about. Brothers and sisters, if you do not feel the softness of the heart in this moment, in this month, at this beautiful place, when would you like your heart to be softened? Come on, isn't it time enough? Isn't it time enough that you have had for Allah to soften your heart and for you to turn towards Allah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May He forgive our shortcomings. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad. Ala Muhammad. Ala Muhammad. Ala